Hello and welcome to this week's video. I've been talking a lot recently about biophilic design principles, and one that's caught a lot of people's attention is the prospect and refuge theory. At its most simple, the theory suggests that people prefer settings where they can observe their surroundings, prospect, while feeling safe and concealed, refuge. When we stop to think about it, there are a lot of examples all around us. For example, when I go to do a presentation, I often find people will start off sitting towards the back of a space, particularly where there are walls. This allows them to see everything, yet remain protected. Another example is how people usually feel uncomfortable working at a workstation with their back to a walkway. They can't see what's coming and they're exposed. The prospect refuge theory was first proposed by geologist Jay Appleton of the University of Hull in his 1975 book, The Experience of Landscape. The book explores how humans psychologically respond to environments based on natural instincts. The idea is that we have adaptations from our ancestors who needed to spot potential threats whilst remaining hidden. By understanding the psychology of space preference, particularly prospect and refuge, we can understand why people are drawn to some spaces and not others, and begin to accommodate that in our designs. Now, let's explore some practical ways we can apply the prospect and refuge theory in our designs. First off, think about creating partial barriers within open areas. Use elements like open shelving, glass partitions, lattice screens, or strategically placed plants to form partitions that aren't completely solid. This allows people to observe their surroundings whilst feeling a sense of enclosure. This example in the Osmo building in Battersea, where tall plants and statement trees divide what would be otherwise a very large open space. Next, consider the entrance experience. If you have doors opening into a large open plan area, something particularly common in studio environments, consider adding some large planters or partial screening near the entrance. This way people aren't stepping straight into a room full of people, which can be a bit overwhelming. This large curved planter is a great example of a gentle transition into another space. Following on, incorporating planting between desks can provide an extra layer of privacy and refuge while still allowing prospect looking through the foliage. Whilst it might sound a bit elementary, it's very common to see planters on the end of desk runs, but less common to see them between the desks like you do here at Babylifts. Designing corner seating areas like this one at Banking Circle can also make a big difference. Placing desks or seats against walls or in corners allows people to have their backs protected while keeping an eye on the entire space. Creating nooks or breakout spaces in alcoves or niches provides spots where people can retreat from the main area but still stay connected visually, like this example at Osborne Clark. A recent design trend we're seeing is incorporating serpentine layouts with curves and bends, like Shark Ninja's new offices. It can create pockets where people feel more sheltered, rather than straight lines where everything is visible. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, don't forget about desk orientation. Arranging desks so that people face entrances or main pathways, or at least a perpendicular to thoroughfares, can reduce anxiety of not being able to see who might be approaching from behind. By weaving these elements of environmental psychology and, by extension, biophilic design into our spaces, we can create spaces that make people feel at their most comfortable and productive. I hope you found this unpacking of the prospect and refuge theory interesting. If you did, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and give me a follow on LinkedIn for more on how plants can enhance our spaces and well-being. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.